Thanks, Sam. Um, yes, so hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining our Unilever segment of your Employability Week. I hope you had a really insightful, really interesting week so far. Um, Sam and I are super excited today to be talking to you about Unilever and what our future careers team and everything we have to offer at Unilever for you. Um, I'm going to be talking you through sort of what Unilever is all about, what it's like to work here, um, and then Sam will also give, be giving you a little bit more of a walkthrough around the actual opportunities that we have in terms of um, as an IP or a UFLP, what it's like working here. Um, and then hopefully we can answer a few of your questions at the very end. So if you do have any questions, by all means, feel free to pop them into the chat box or keep a hold of them and we can visit them at the end. So um, before we get started and before we even introduce ourselves, we are going to ask you to do us a really, really big favour. Uh, whip out your phones and please scan this QR code. Um, this essentially is just going to ask you to fill out a really quick survey. It'll take you no longer than two minutes. Um, and it just helps us record how many of you guys we are actually reaching and helps us on our side of things in terms of how many of you guys are we actually impacting? How many of you are we getting to work with? Um, so it'd be a really, really big favor if you could all just scan the QR code and very quickly fill it in. I'm going to give you about a minute because I've, I've done it and it doesn't take too long, I believe. And I think Sam's popping the link into the form in the chat box. Yes. Yeah, just sent them. Um, and just to reiterate that this is super important for us. Um, we want to be able to track you as one of the 10 million young people that we're trying to meet, uh, to reach and, and upskill in some way. But we can't track you unless you tell us we can track you. Uh, so please do either scan the QR code or click on that link that I've just sent in the chat at some point uh, during this call. I've got it up in the background so I can see how many of you are actually responding. <laughs> um, so we will continue to chase you, but please, please, please do fill that in for us. I can't tell you just how important it is um, for us to actually get this done from you. So thank you. Yes. Thanks, Sam. Okay, um, I'll leave you guys with that form. Um, please do, like Sam said, get around to filling that um, at any point during the next hour or so. But now let's get stuck into it. So, like I said, um, we're here, we're from Unilever, we're here to talk to you all things Unilever. So, hello, I'm Farah. Um, I'm actually a UFLP, so I'm a second year customer development grad. So UFLP is what our Unilever grad scheme is called. It stands for Unilever Future Leaders Programme. Um, I joined Unilever this time last year in our sales department. Um, and I have just gone into my second year in marketing, like a month ago, I think. So fresh, fresh faced in the marketing world. Um, and how I connect with you guys um, on an Enactus front is I am an Enactus Nottingham alumni. So I was an Enactus in my second and final year of uni. And I actually got onto the grad scheme through the Enactus Fast Track. So I'm quite well versed in how Unilever and Enactus definitely um, work hand in hand um, and hopefully I can relay some of that insight to you guys today and then Sam do you want to introduce yourself? You're definitely a, a poster uh, girl <laughs> for us and we do with that and hopefully you'll start to see very soon how you are super linked to that as well um, but I'm Sam I'm a future careers manager for Unilever UK so I've been looking after all things um, kind of graduates, undergraduates, uh, apprenticeship, but also our key partners like Matters for the past two and a half years or so. Um, and I'm super excited to get to chat to you all today. Thanks, Sam. Can I just check, there's not an echo or anything when I speak, right? No, was there a nice voice there? Yeah, there's a slight echo on your audio, Sam, but I'm just trying to identify where it was coming from. I really rudely muted Farah, which is probably why I she thought, thought it was I thought, No, I thought it might be, might be why, Charlie, don't worry. Is it okay now? I'll have a look, look at my settings in the background, background, don't worry. Yeah, I don't think it's to do with anybody else on the call's echo. I think it's coming from your audio, Sam, some, for some reason. Okay. Um, right, I'm covering the next few slides anyway, and Sam, I'll let you see if you can work out what's going on with your volume. But in the meantime, let's move on. Now my screen is frozen, which isn't ideal. There we go. Um, yeah, so that's who we are. Now a little bit about who Unilever is. So 
Unilever, if you're not already familiar with, is one of the world's largest consumer good companies, and we are solely driven by our purpose to make sustainable living commonplace. So that is absolutely, I can 100% vouch for this being our motto here at Unilever, day in, day out, everything we do in terms of the way we work with each other, the work that we're putting into our brands, the work that we're doing with our shoppers, with our consumers, it's all around this idea of making sustainable living commonplace. Um, and that's definitely, again, another link to, to an axis, um, the idea of sustainable business practice, sustainable ways of living, but also sustainable ways of working definitely shapes what we do over at Unilever, what our, our image is all about, and also what our USP is. Um, I think even before starting at Unilever, that's probably something that I underestimated. Um, it's definitely something that you're told about and that you read about as soon as you Google Unilever. Um, but I think after actually seeing it for myself, day in, like I said, day in, day out, you really do see the sustainable element come to life. Um, and that's proven and backed up by these amazing figures. So 3.4 billion people use our products every day. 3.4 billion people. That is like an incredible number that I can't even get my head around. No matter how many times I've heard Sam present this to me, no many times I've heard this or read it on our website, 3.4 billion people. And I can guarantee that everyone on this call uses at least one Unilever product, whether you know it or you don't. Um, and to back up our scope even further, we're available in over 190 countries. So that's not just the UK, you've got India, you've got China, you've got Malaysia, all over the world, we have our Unilever brands. Um, and in 2021, we saw a total turnover of 52 billion euros, um, with 58% of that coming from emerging markets. So you can definitely see that our reach, oh, my lights have gone off. Our reach and our scope um, is definitely, definitely spanning across so many different geographies, so many different cultures and so many different types of people, um, making us the second largest advertiser globally. So I hope that puts into a little bit of perspective just how huge Unilever is. Um, but something that we do really like to make sure we get across to you guys is as global as our reach is, we are definitely still a local company we have a local and a global reach which we will also tap into a little bit more as we go on um, but we have over 400 brands so i think i said was it 3.2 billion 3.4 billion people use our products and those products belong to over 400 brands that all sit underneath the unilever umbrella whether that's your ice cream or your hair products or your beauty products or your home care products your foods, we're tapping into all those different markets. Um, and we sit as 14th on the top 50 consumer good brands. So like I said, we've got a really big, strong brand presence around the world um, into various different markets. Um, and these are some of the brands that we have. So have a look, see how many of them you identify, you can spot, I'm sure they all, yeah, pretty much all look very familiar to you. You either use it or you've seen it or you know someone that does use it. Um, I'd say a perk of working here has definitely been the fact that we have a staff shop, which means I can go down and definitely stock up on not just my own groceries and my own home care, but my mum's, my sister's, my friends. Um, that's another thing. No one tells you this before you start, but you will very quickly become the shopper friend, as in my friends will send me into work and say, oh, you know, that moisturizer that you guys do yeah I love that simple moisturizer do you mind just grabbing me one and more, you, more often than not you're always going to say yes um so it's definitely a hidden perk um from working working here so just to uh further reiterate our reach um and also the sustainable element of the business that we were talking about. So like I said, a lot of the work and a lot of the way that we work at Unilever is centered around this idea of sustainable living, sustainable purpose. Um, I think sustainability is definitely a buzzword that's been kind of increasingly been drawing attention, uh, especially in the corporate world. I would definitely say that at Unilever, we very much have our unique and quite powerful definition of how we look at sustainability. And that's that it spans across people and planet. So we don't just look at sustainability to mean recycling, to mean plastic. 100% it means all of those things. And that's reflected again in the fantastic, you know, 
impact figures that we do have in terms of 52% of our packaging being reusable or recyclable or 67% of our agricultural materials being sustainably sourced. That's fantastic. But as well as that, we also recognize the importance of sustainability from a people perspective. And that's all about health and hygiene. We've helped 1.3 billion people improve their health and hygiene since 2010. That's a fantastic figure. We've got a women empowerment schemes all across the business where we're seeing 2.63 million women empowered through the different impact led projects that we have through our different brand purposes. Um, so it's definitely something that I do want to reiterate throughout the call is that sustainability definitely encompasses so much more than I even thought it could before I joined here. Um, and that is all in the shape of this beautiful thing that we like to call our Unilever compass. So back in until 2010, I believe, we had our sustainable living plan. So the USLP, which if you've done a little bit of research into Unilever, you may already be familiar with. Um, and that was essentially our sustainability strategy. When it came to 2010, we did a massive revision, a massive uh, makeover, I guess, of our sustainable strategy. And we created this called our sustainability compass. Now, you cannot work in any parts of the business, any parts of Unilever, without coming across this compass at least once a week. This sits at the heart, at the core of absolutely everything we do, both internally and externally. And I think it really nicely encapsulates exactly what I was just talking about, the fact that sustainability spans over people, planet and society. So if you look on the left, you can see that we've got our brands with purpose grow. We've got so many brands that sit under our Unilever umbrella. What does that mean from a sustainability lens? Well, it means that we're able to improve people's health, confidence and well-being. We can look after the health of the planet as well as this and in turn contribute to a fairer and more socially inclusive world. So it's all about how we can tap into three different levels of impact, which again, I know you guys are super well versed in as, as um, inactive students, um, because you day in, day out are looking at how you're tapping into the sustainability element of your own businesses. Um, you've also got companies with purpose last. So we believe that in order for a, for a business to be truly successful, truly profitable, you need to be truly sustainable. And that's all about how you can deliver long term value, make sure that you're seeking to and serving people everywhere from different cultures, different genders, different identities, wherever it may be, and using this scale for good. We've talked about the incredible scale and scope that Unilever has. It's all about how we can put that into practice and actually turn that into a really effective um, and successful impact. And then last but not least, we've got the third segment of our Unilever compass, people with purpose thrive. This is a huge thing at Unilever, and Sam's actually going to go into a lot more detail about this later on in, on our call today. Um, but like I said, Unilever breeds purpose. It's as much as we like to take in people with purpose, we love to make sure that's something that doesn't get lost along the way. So whether that's making sure brands um, have their own purpose, we also like to believe that everyone within Unilever, everyone that works at Unilever is aware of their own purpose. And even if you're not completely certain on what that purpose is, we can help you do everything we can to, to help you find it. Um, and it's all about creating that capability through this lifelong learning that we want you to build up or unlocking your capacity for growth, all of these, all of these things to shape you into being the best you you can be, the most sustainable version of you and building up your purpose from that perspective. So on that note, uh, in terms of how we put this into practice, we are the number one FMCG graduate employer of choice in 54 countries. That's definitely a title that we love to celebrate. Um, we've got over, well, nearly 150,000 employees. And within that, we have a gender balance that actually tips in favor of women um, with a 52-48 balance of both female and male. So you can see that there is a really lovely balanced environment that we love to have at Unilever. Uh, I think that's where you can really thrive when you really celebrate the diverse of dif diversity of different cultures, different identities, different purposes, different skill sets. All of that is celebrated at Unilever, which I think is definitely something that 
sets us apart, I guess, um, from many different environments that you come across during your careers. Um, and then again, leading back to my earlier point of the fact that as much as we have a global presence and we are hitting every other market you can think of, 93% of our leaders are local. We are a local global business um, and we love that. We, we thrive upon that. It's definitely something to know. And then in terms of Inactus, four of us got um, for, onto the UFLP. Um, three of us onto the summer placements and three of us as industrial placements. I just want to double check. Are those stats up to date? I'm not too sure. I think they are. Um, but having said that, again, it just further reiterates the fact that we love our partnership with Enactus. We love helping you guys out, but also supporting you where we can um, because we look at you guys as exactly the purpose-driven individuals that we love to have at Unilever. So... That was a lot of waffle from me, but I am now going to pass you on to Sam, who's going to give you a little bit more detail into the specific UFLP and IP programs that we have and what these look like in terms of the opportunities it can bring you. So, Sam, over to you. Has my echo gone? No. Okay. Let me try again. Let me just try and switch that off now. Have I still got the echo? Yeah. I have I'm not, not, I'm not plugged, plugged into anything, anything else. else, I don't have any speakers or I'm not. It's oh. fixed. Okay, I did nothing. So maybe someone somewhere heard and sorted me out. Brill, okay. <laughs> Hope that'll be a bit more enjoyable now that you don't hear me twice. Um, so Barra has just taken you through a lot of stuff about Unilever. Hopefully you're starting to think, oh, this sounds like a great place that I want to work. Um, and she's also shared with you a little bit about our people and how we are really focused on making sure that our people have a purpose and they thrive with us as well. That's what I'm going to take you through. As I mentioned at the beginning, my kind of job title is the future careers manager. If you just go back one for me. Um, and what we do then, so I'm look after the team who are all about championing long-term investment in future talent. You guys are our future talent. Um, and we also are delivering against that global commitment that I spoke about, which 28 of you have now responded to. So if you haven't done that, another shout out to uh, click the link and, and submit the, the form for us. But everything that we do, including the partnerships with um, organisations like Enactus, including the programmes I'm about to take you through, um, and a really exciting kind of sneak peek of a competition at the end is building up and laddering towards that. So I also came through a future careers program. Uh, if you go on to the next slide for me, I've got some different kind of photos um, and a bit of my journey as to where I've been. So I've been in Unilever for around seven and a half years. Um, and there's some things that I've got up to. I spent two years of those in uh, Rotterdam, living out in the Netherlands. Um, and some photos here from kind of all across the world, really, um, where I've been able to do a number of different things within HR within that time. So how can you guys uh, get involved with us then? Um, Unilever in the UK has a number of different sites, as you can see on here. Um, and we've tried to colour code them a little bit uh, towards whether they're manufacturing sites, whether they're research and development centres, whether they're offices and so on. Um, and you can see we are spread across the UK uh, with lots of different opportunities. On the next slide, there are some fun facts about these. I won't read them all out to you. Um, but essentially, a uh, few fun ones. So Crumlin, which is our kind of home of pot noodle, make 3.5 million pot noodles a week. I would challenge you to eat that many pot noodles. <laughs> we also, uh, one for the, the football fans maybe, our Leeds factory as a business, uh, kind of on its own, makes more turnover and profit than Manchester United does. That's quite a nice one to brag about, I think. Um, UK... Unilever has around 70 production lines, which manufacture 1 million tons of products annually. Uh, some other kind of fun things in here as well. I mean, the ice cream one, I can't even fathom. Our Gloucester factory makes 1.5 billion portions of ice cream every year. And actually, as part of that, it's 9 million magnums a week. That's a, a lot of magnums. Uh, but you can kind of see then what happens in the UK. So if we flip on to the next slide, um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about our industrial placement program, our future leaders program, which is our grad program, and I will touch on the summer placement program. 
key thing to call out now is that we're not recruiting externally for our summer placement program this year. Instead, we're reserving spots for our key partners. So actually, at some point, uh, we will reach out to the likes of Charlie and say we have X number of spots um, reserved already for an actress. Who do we want to put forward? So that's why I won't dive into it in too much detail here because we're slightly changing that this year. But I'll touch on the industrial placement and the teacher leaders program for graduates. So I, we've got functions now. <laughs> just to throw some more info at you within Unilever and everything that you've just seen that we do, all of those brands that we own, there are lots of different people that need to have lots of different touch points across those brands. So the way that I like to think about this is a product life cycle. I'm looking around. Usually I'm sitting upstairs and in my office, but I'm actually in my boyfriend's office um, downstairs. So I'm trying to see if he's got any Unilever products, but he doesn't. Um, so let's imagine that I've got one with me that I can uh, I can show you. If you think about that product, whatever it may be, say it's a Vaseline tin. Someone from finance needs to sit and figure out what the finances of that product are going to look like. How are we going to make money on that? Someone in human resources is going to have to have hired the people in finance and make sure that they're trained up and they're right at the top of their game uh, to be able to do the work that they need to do. Someone in marketing then needs to go and shout about that product externally and really advertise it um, around the world and around the UK so people will come and buy it. Someone in supply chain is going to need to make sure that we can actually get that product in our factories, down the factory lines, and transported into our big customers like Tesco's or Sainsbury's um, and then into the hands of our, our buyers at the end. Customer development, these are the guys that are literally telling Sainsbury's or Tesco's why you should come and buy this product and stock it for us in the first place and everything else in between. So you can read way more on our job descriptions that we have online and, and also on our social media pages, you'll see that we'll often say, this is Bill, he's a UFLP in HR, this is what he's been up to. So if you want a better feel for what the functions are, you can go and have a look, um, I guess, at reading kind of job descriptions and on our social media pages, it will really give you a good insight. One more to call out on that is that um, the co communications and sustainability is one function that we only do an industrial placement in, which you can see on here. Um, and the reason why we, well, the reason I want to call that out is I don't want you to get hung up on the fact that that's the only one that has sustainability in the name. Um, as Farah has shown and has hopefully got picking up, sustainability lies across every single thing that we do. Um, so every single function will have that in it. You'll be able to work on sustainability focused projects. The communication and sustainability uh, program for the IP is actually more of the PR, um, how we look externally. It's comms, it's PR, um, and it's managing kind of external advocacy, et cetera, as well. So don't get hung up on that one. Let will throw you off. I know you will because you're an actor uh, student. So the UFLP then, this is our three-year graduate program. Um, and the idea really is that you kind of go into this, the leadership scheme. So you can join the graduate program up to five years after graduating. You will then go through a number of rotations. So what you can see down the side are kind of abbreviations of those functions I've just spoke about. So marketing, customer development, finance, supply chain, technology management. DNA is data and analytics, which is a stream of technology management, research and development, and human resources. And you can see that they rotate into different roles throughout the, the, the three years. Um, so marketing, for example, will do three times 12 month placements. One of those will probably be in customer development. One of those might be in local marketing. One of them might be in global marketing. The reason these are different is because there's a lot of thought and kind of analysis that's gone into this to make sure that the rotations and the roles that you're doing give you the right breadth and depth of experience and knowledge and learning to come out the other side as a real kind of business leader with a major, if you like, in one of those functions. So you're not just a leader of that function, but you're an all round business leader and you have a functional major in one of these functions as well. So that's what the, the UFLP looks like. The IP, you will stay in one um, rotation or one role, if you like, for the entire 12 months. Finance and comms and sustainability usually do two. So they'll do two six month placements, but everything else, um, you're there for the year. So how do you get onto one of these programs? Uh, I'll talk through the selection process here. So for the UFLP, the graduate program, 
you will apply online uh, on the digital application. Very simple. You can import lots of data from everywhere else. You've already got profiles. Um, we don't ask for a CV or cover letter or anything like that. We are not assessing you on your experience. We're assessing you on your potential. That's really key for us. We will also ask you to complete a diversity and inclusion situational test um, on this as well, so we can get an idea for how inclusive you are too, because again, that's a really important cultural aspect for us at Unilever. Then you will go through and be invited to an online assessment that will test both your IQ and also your EQ. So we're also, again, not just looking at uh, kind of cognitive intelligence, but we're looking at emotional intelligence as well. If you pass that, you'll be invited through to a digital uh, video interview. So hopefully a lot of you will breathe a sigh of relief there because it's not a kind of a, a live one-on-one -on -one video interview. It's a pre-recorded. Uh, someone from Unilever has recorded a video that sets a question for you and you have a couple of goes, you have a couple of minutes to think about your response, a couple of goes at recording your answer and then submitting one off the back of that as well. And that's four questions. Um, the first three are kind of just usual, um, I guess, kind of situation questions. The last is a case study question. As you guys are with Anaptis, I'm going to give you a little tip because I want you guys to do uh, well in this. Question four is double weighted. No pressure, but do well on question four. Uh, that's what I'm going to leave with you. And if you're successful uh, after level three, you'll then be invited to a discovery centre. And I've got more slides and a bit more detail of what that will actually look like um, in a couple slides time. If you're successful at that, you will then have an offer um, and get to onboarding with us. Slightly different for industrial placement students. It follows a similar kind of narrative. So you have that online application. If you're applying for finance IP, you will then be invited to a numerical reasoning test. This is essentially testing your numeracy uh, to make sure that you kind of have the level required for a finance programme. Then you will go through to a very similar kind of pre-recorded video interview. Again, it's four questions. Um, question four isn't double weighted on this one, by the way. These are my nuggets that I'm throwing in for you as an actor, so I probably wouldn't if I was doing this for anyone else. Um, then you'll be invited again to a final stage, which is the Discovery Centre, before you'd move into offer and onboarding. So on the next slide, what or who are we looking for? So there's a number of things that we look for for kind of baseline attributes. One is being really purposeful and passionate. You've hopefully seen us talking about the fact that you believe very purposeful and passionate. So we want you to exhibit those similar types of behaviours. Great if you have extracurricular experiences and access is that in itself. So perfect. Geographically mobile. Um, on the IP, you will get to give a preference for your location, but generally you'll apply for the programme and the function, and then you'll be told where your role will be based, um, and that will be based on making sure that we give you the right role rather than the right location. On the UFLP, you could be asked for each of those rotations that you go into to relocate to a new site, and there is relocation support available for that, but that's a really important one. Uh, functional motivation, as you apply to a, a function within a program, we really need to see why, what, what it is that's driving you towards that function. Um, that's one to note down. It's going to take anything off this. Let it be functional motivation. Let it also be business acumen. Um, and what I mean by that is not necessarily just financial acumen, but actually how does the business work together? How do those functions work with each other to deliver what we need to deliver? Uh, and then if you click next, there'll be three little things on here to think about. So I've mentioned purpose, I've mentioned drive, and the last one is confidence. Um, so come in, be yourself, um, be confident with who you are. Um, don't let that slip into arrogance. That's a fine line to tread, um, but but let yourself be confident and come in. We, we want you to succeed just as much as you do um, in these kind of final stages particularly. So talking of the final stage, our Discovery Centre for UFLP has five stages. You will be given some pre-work before you join and around the week before you join. It's all around our sustainability targets, how we're doing with the, we give you a million euros, not real, unfortunately. And you have to decide how you want to spend that to help us meet those targets. So quite a fun one and hopefully fairly linked to kind of what you've been doing with Anactus as well. Um, a number of different things that happen there. The other one I just want to touch on is the purpose interview, which is where it's not a traditional competency base. Tell me about a time when. This is really delving into your purpose um, as a human being, what gets you out of bed in the morning, what drives you, but also your purpose for applying to the UFLP, to the programme, um, et cetera, et cetera. And 
again, there's a bit on there, the functional challenge, just really make sure if I'd give you a top tip that you're kind of aware of your function and done a little bit of research on your function before you go into this as well. For IP, very similar, you'll get very similar pre-work and you have to kind of come up with your idea and submit that before you join. Um, and then you will also have a very similar kind of purpose driven interview at the end. All of our discovery centres are virtual still this year. You'll be working with kind of small groups of other candidates too when you go into some of these project delivery meetings, etc. Um, but of course, we are still assessing you individually. Sorry, I lost my mouse there. Um, yes, so thank you, Sam. Yeah, so that's. Oh, can you see my screen still? Yes, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so now we just want to talk you through a little bit about how we actually support you over at Unilever. So, uh, like Sam mentioned, we're definitely investing in you as a person, as an individual, rather than what you've done. That's why we don't ask for things like CVs. We don't want to know just about the experience you had. But more about your potential, your purpose, your ambition, all those kinds of things. Um, and those are definitely things that we love to, to have thrive when you join Unilever. Um, so there's kind of three nice, neat little buckets, if you like. First being, we're all about wanting people at Unilever, our colleagues, to unleash their potential. Um, in doing so, we want you to discover your purpose. And this, all, this is all around our commitment to you. So what this essentially mean is, means is when, um, when we have someone join Unilever, we don't very much stop, stop it there and say, okay, you've got the job, good to go. No, it's all about how, okay, what's the next step? How can we actually tap into what it is that makes you want to get up in the morning, come to work, do what you do, do what you do in the best way possible? How can we really tap into that big word around potential? And again, that's definitely something that we would love to see in things like discovery centers and interviews and that kind of thing. It's all about where do you see yourself heading rather than where you are right now. So don't be too put off or too nervous or ambushed around this idea of, oh, I don't know if I have too, too, too much, if I don't know if I have enough experience or I don't know if I have too many examples to back up, you know, business acumen, for example. It's all about where, what do you want to get out of? And I always say a biggest tip, I think, whenever someone approaches, approaches me and asks for advice on the application is um, always think about why Unilever is a fit for you as well as why you're a fit for Unilever. Um, what is it about Unilever and the culture here and what we kind of, what, what our values are, what, what out of all of that fits and resonates most with who you are? And that leads me nicely into all about discovering your purpose. Um, as much as our brands and our company has a purpose, we like to think that everyone that works at Unilever also is discovering their own purpose. So like I said, what is it that you know, gives you that spark? What is it that gets you up in the morning and thinks, yes, I want to get out there and I want to I go to work because X, Y, and Z. Um, I actually had a, had a conversation about purpose with one of my um, colleagues last week. And his purpose was he wants to be, he actually found a very poetic way of putting his purpose. He said he wants to be the warm radiator in a cold room. He was a HR grad and it was all about, um, you know, being the energy that draws people to him, you know, is the comforting energy in a room, is the place where everyone kind of feels relaxed and at peace. Um, and that was his purpose. So like, he's, like, I'm, like I said, it doesn't need to be anything completely fancy. It doesn't need to be completely business driven. Something really personal as well really fits nicely into this, but it's just about tapping into what it is that is your spark, what it is that gets you excited. Um, and again, that is shaped all around our commitment to you. So something we have at Unilever, like I just mentioned, is our purpose workshops. So we offer these on to everyone, wherever you sit in the business, whether you're a grad, whether you've been here 10 years, five years, 20 years, we offer something called a purpose workshop. And this is a full day workshop where you're invited to come and discover your purpose so you're invited to reflect on past experiences you had as a child or at university or when you started work and your professional and your personal life all those kinds of things that shape you and make you who you are we love to hear about it we love to encourage that um, and help you kind of along that journey and find out more about what it is that that makes you you um, so Leading on to benefits, 
we have a wealth of benefits over at Unilever, uh, specifically to our IPs. We do have um, things like salary and all that kind of thing. So I'm not going to go through every single one just in the interest of time. But I am going to say that these are definitely not an exhaustive list. Um, one thing that I think everyone in recent years has definitely seen the value in is flexible working. So we definitely encourage agile working, which means that um, the role that you do go into, wherever it's in the business, you're very much encouraged to work wherever you can, um, finding that you can do the job sufficiently and efficiently and well. Um, as I mentioned that you kind of are relocated depending on where your function and your job sits. Um, but even within that, there is a work from home and a work into the office balance, that kind of thing. Um, and you're very much encouraged to have a work life balance that works for you because one schedule doesn't fit all um, as we believe here at Unilever. Um, we also have holidays. So of course, you get your 25 days holiday plus bank holidays. Um, one thing that we definitely do like to remind people of as well, though, is that you do have the option to swap out your bank holidays um, to change to any alternative cultural or religious um, holidays that you wish to observe, because we understand that the calendar bank holiday may not be applicable for everyone. Um, so you're very much given the freedom to, to shape your calendar to what fits you. Um, Edie and I massive thing at Unilever um, and it truly is something really really celebrated we will go into a little bit more detail on this in a, in a while um, but we are very much encouraging actively encouraging people across the business to get involved with as many initiatives as they can as many as they want to um, and these span across all different types of um, EDI and i um, initiative ideas so whether that be LGBTQ plus whether it be um, our racial equity, whether it be our gender equity, whether it be our enable network, which is all around disability awareness, all sorts of things. Um, we definitely have a really expansive EDNI network available as well. Um, health and well-being, there's an on-site gym, which I actually do go to, believe it or not. I never used to go to the gym and then I found out we have a great one here at Leatherhead. Um, we have gym, we have yoga classes even sometimes. Um, but we also have, again, a wealth of mental health and well-being resources. So something that I've really found um, to be an amazing perk here at Unilever is also the fact that we have a Headspace subscription. So those of you familiar with Headspace, um, all about a mental well-being app, um, Unilever does give you a free subscription to that service. So plenty of benefits. As a UFLP, you are also uh, provided with all said benefits. Um, with the added one of relocation, so the UFLP, the grad scheme is a three year scheme um, and because you, depending on which function you sit in, after each year or six month placement or three month placement, wherever it may be, um, you may need to relocate to a different office and they, that might be a different city in the country or a different part of London, um, wherever it may be, you are provided with relocation support. Um, and you're also given a £5,000 interest-free loan, which is a big fat help if you're someone like me who, freshly out of uni, doesn't have a, a lot in the bank in their savings, um, but is super keen and super excited to move into London. And this is repayable over the three-year period. So you're definitely given a lot of support there. Um, you're also given support in terms of finding a house, finding somewhere to live. Um, so we definitely do look after you in all that kind of, um, on, in all respects of that kind of thing. Um, and again, yeah, you're given a competitive reward. You're given the, the opportunity to constantly learn and constantly develop along the way. Um, it's not just a case of turn up, do your job, go home. Uh, there are definitely different training courses. Um, you know, if you're someone that joins on the finance scheme, you have a really big passion in marketing or you want to know a little bit more about sustainability specifically, you're definitely encouraged and given the tools and the resources to tap into that um, and kind of push your own learning as well as your day-to-day -day job. Um, so this is leading back into what I said about EDNI. So at Unilever, we have something that we call our networks. So these are our different networks that I mentioned, all centered around a really key 
social change, um, whether that be, like I said, our Proud net Network, which is all about celebrating and um, bringing awareness around the LGBTQ plus community. We've got Enable, which is all about our disability awareness team and how we can do everything we can to build a more inclusive environment for them. Uh, Empower, which is all about racial equity and diversity. Um, it's Black History Month, so we've actually got some Empower um, themed events around the office. When we had Carnival not too long ago, we did a massive barbecue um, downstairs, sort of celebrating all of all, of, all things to do around that. Um, and then we've got Unity, which is our gender equality network, um, all about how we can install and celebrate, I guess, awareness and um, equality around the working and personal environments. And then as well as that, we do just have different communities within Unilever all around different um, that kind of appreciate all different types of life. So whether that be you're a parent, whether that be you're a carer, all those kinds of things, Edie and I is definitely something that sits very close to the heart of our business. And again, leads me back into this idea that sustainability sits at the core of our business. And a part of that is Edie and I and how we can make sure that we're looking after our people as well as our planet. So, Sam, over to you for this bit, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, just going to touch on timelines, I've been sending some bits in the chat as well. Um, so, if you flip us to the next slide, I'll just talk through those timings for the graduate program and the industrial placement program. So, the UFLP is open now. Um, hopefully, some of you have already applied to this. Um, we will be closing applications as soon as we hit the number that we need. We, we have hit the number that we need in a couple of functions already. Um, I know we were doing them again with my team on Thursday, then we might close some. So if you do want to get to the UFLP, I would advise applying by about 10 o'clock on Thursday when I'm going to review them and close some. Um, so that's your warning. I've set the links in the chat. There are also a QR code on here, and you can see the links on there too. For the IP, this actually opened on Monday this week. Um, and again, we will close as soon as we get the numbers that we need. So we recommend that you apply as soon as you possibly can um, to get into that as well. Um, and then you can kind of see a little bit on here the timings um, that are on here. So as soon as you apply, you'll be automatically kind of entered into and invited to, in, to do the next stage. The UFLP, our discovery centres are scheduled for the first one, which is marketing, is the last week in November, and they'll run through to kind of early mid February. For industrial placement, again, we've got one starting at the end of November, but the majority will be January, February next year, and so that we need to be expected to be invited to the discovery centre. On the next slide is um, some pieces around the um, opportunities for you as an active student. So all of you as an active student actually have early access uh, to these programmes. So you were actually invited to apply the Friday before we went live um, on each of the Mondays that we went live to the general public. Um, if you did apply the part of this, hopefully you ticked up for each um, on your application. Even if you apply now, please, uh, sorry, not up for each, I should say an actors. Um, please tick an actors um, on your application when you do apply. Uh, if you've heard us speaking about it on this call, which gives us an indication and allow us to track how successful uh, our active students are. And uh, again, some of you um, will have been invited forward to have a fast track opportunity. We do this every year with our active students as well. Um, we get an opportunity for this to happen and Charlie lets us know who the lucky people are um, that are going to receive that. I can see that everyone, um, Charlie's a good of you to know as well, everyone that was invited is as fast track through uh, and has, has applied. So that's all good news. But again, next year we'll offer a very similar thing. I'm, I'm not, not going to play this video in the interest of time, but what I will do is send a link in the chat there. Um, if you, oh, that's some, for some reason, gone as a direct message. I don't realize that's happening. Um, there you go. There's a direct link um, through to this video. So if you just want to skip through it, Barbara, the point of me showing that video was to introduce you to a competition which we're hosting at Unilever, which I think um, will be a really useful and interesting one for you as an active student. 
So we are running um, a competition that's actually fairly similar to uh, the Atlantis competition, but it's called Unilever Future Leaders League. Um, and essentially, this is a global competition that um, markets from across the world are able to kind of send a local team to represent them. So we need to pick a team to go and represent um, the UK um, in, in this Unilever Future Leaders League. It's a business case competition, um, and you will be able to join and enter that in teams of three. Um, doesn't matter if you're at the same uni, different uni, etc. And if you just need to be at uni or a student, it's just the key. Um, and we will be setting a real life business challenge that one of our brands is facing right now. You will be able to respond to that, submit your kind of challenge responses, your solutions. Um, and there's a bunch of prizes along the way, but some of those prizes are kind of tech bundles with Apple watches and sending yarn straps, um, AirPods. We also have some bath opportunities available to some of our shortlisted teams. We've got product hampers. Uh, we've got uh, kind of mentoring opportunities with senior leaders. We've got pitching sessions. We've got so many things. Um, but the top 10 teams will be shortlisted uh, at the end of this year. And I'm invited as one of our Unilever offices to come and pitch to the senior Unilever leaders as well. So also a good kind of uh, opportunity for you to practice some of those skills that you might also use as an actor. Um, the next kind of stage to this, you can register your interest, I'll send another link um, in the chat, but you can register your interest for this competition now. The next kind of event, I guess, that's happening is that we have on the 1st of November um, a live event where we're going to reveal what brand it is that uh, is setting the competition. Um, but we also, as a part of that, we'll do a little bit of um, a session on how to answer a case study. So that will be really useful, not only for success in the competition, but pretty much every graduate and undergraduate employer will include case studies in their recruitment um, selection processes. So it will be a really worthwhile session to come and join to listen to how to get a would advise you go about answering case studies, etc. So I've just sent the link um, to the teacher leaders lead. Um, if you click on the fact that you're interested, you'll get an invite through um, to that event on the first, but you can also read more about this um, on there. This competition launched yesterday, so you're one of the first uh, kind of groups in the UK to hear about this. Um, but we would really, really recommend that you join. In previous years, we have had inactive students getting into kind of the top five even teams um, of this, and actually one of them won uh, a couple of years ago as well. Um, so you have your, in good stead for this as well. Um, and then these are just kind of some things to leave you with. So I've sent all of the links that are on here um, in the chat. So I've sent our general kind of the teachers, careers. I've sent a specific link to the graduates, specific link to the placements, and I've sent a link to that future link that's legal on there. As I mentioned, do come and follow some of our social sites. I put the kind of UK sites on there and but also generally because particularly when you're going into discovery centres, um, it's really useful for you to just have a bit of an awareness of what's going on in Unilever. You'll often find I do it on scroll through the Unilever page, global pages and think, oh, I didn't know we were doing that, or that's a really cool initiative that they've just started. So it's a really easy way to stay up to date on prep for kind of interviews or stay up to date with the kind of industrial um, advances like yes yeah. you're just kind of going in by osmosis it's scrolling through your instagram and you happen to see something just go in and um, it's a really good way to stay up to date so that's what i will leave you with yes thank you sam um yeah that's everything from us guys in terms of information i appreciate that might have been information overload but we are happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I don't know if the chat box has received many. I can't see it. I have been answering a lot of them um, as I've been going along. So there's one, I think someone's a bit confused with in terms of when the graduate program starts. So the graduate program starts every September. So to be eligible to apply, you need to have graduated before that day. So if you're graduating next year, you're, you're going to be eligible for that, basically. I hope that answers the question. Um, and then similarly, the placement and program starts in June of each year. And to be eligible for that, you just need to be returning to university after um, that placement and program. I think a lot of the others I've actually answered already. We had some around visa sponsorship. We don't sponsor visas. Um, we had some around how to start the application. Click on those links that I sent. 
Um, and then so if you go on the graduate one, for example, you see all of the functions and if they apply now, click on that and then it takes you to the application. Um, people have been asking, is there a link for the tests? And you will get those links after you apply, you'll be invited through to come and complete those. Can a master student apply to this? Absolutely, yeah, you can. Um, you can um, apply to the UFLP up to five years um, after you graduated, but we do also um, accept master students, so I absolutely would welcome you. We have hit it half past, um, and I do have another meeting now. I don't know whether it's staying on. <laughs> That's fine. I do have another meeting at half past as well, so I'm going to um charlie so i don't know if you're gonna send this deck out or this recording out on our behalf or yeah so exactly so what happens next is um the recording will be uh hosted on our live site for you to be able to access you'll be sent uh, when it's uploaded uh, the, the recording you'll be you'll get an email for you to watch that back so you'll have access to that as well um also uh i will also direct you if you kind of got any uh, any questions about um early access or anything like, like that um, you can get in touch with me uh, about that and the process of the process for the windows and things because I've got all that information too. Um, uh, so yeah, but that's that's it. That's all she wrote. Thank you very much, uh, Sam and Farah, for the session today. Um, it was very comprehensive. Uh, I covered absolutely everything. Fantastic uh, to get that insight into what it's like working at Unilever. Uh, Farah, thank you very much for that. Um, and uh, to all the students who joined today, thank you very much for joining. It's been absolutely fantastic uh, to see so many questions being fired out uh, this afternoon. So uh, thank you for that. And we will see you on the next one. So take care, everybody. Goodbye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.